Hi there, my name is Dave Stokes. This is a presentation on new MySQL 8.0 features. For those of you who uh, haven't seen all the great stuff in MySQL 8, my name is Dave Stokes. I am a community manager for Oracle's MySQL community team. Uh, by the way, uh, if I go off on a tangent during Q&A or during this presentation on new products, please take what I say about new products as, with a grain of salt. I do not have perfect knowledge of them and I might unintentionally mislead you. So. MySQL 8 is available in cPanel and WHM V88. V88 and MySQL 8, pretty great. Okay, stop the groaning. Uh, my goal for this presentation is to talk about the advancements in MySQL 8 over the previous version, which is MySQL 5.7. This is a general overview of the new features. Uh, since it's so general, I'm going to skip a whole lot, which might be very important to you, but I'm going to try to pick the, uh, the top ones that I thought most people would be interested in. By the way, if you are using MySQL 5.6, please note it reaches end of life status early February 2021. So if you're running 5.6 or earlier, please upgrade ASAP, hopefully to MySQL 8. What is MySQL? Well, for those who don't know, it's an open source database, 25 years old. Uh, it's a relational database management system. Uh, the community version is GPL uh, level two, uh, version two. Uh, we also have an enterprise edition the uh, core of the software runs the same. The only difference is you get that lovely support number to call when you have problems and some better admin tools like monitoring software, improved backup, at rest encryption, uh, keychain management, all stuff. Also since 5.7, we've been a NoSQL JSON document store database and I'll go into that a little bit later. Also we have other packages out there like our router, the shell, uh, programming connectors, NODB cluster, NDB cluster, and a whole lot more. So when I start talking about eight, and people realize that 5.7 is the last version, they go, what happened to MySQL 6 and 7? Well, there used to be a MySQL version 6 that uh, didn't come to fruition, and a lot of the great features were backported into the 5.1 and 5.5 series. Also, we have a NDB cluster product that's used by the US Navy for ferrier flight information. It's used for massively online games, and mainly to track you as you travel between cell tower to cell tower so the cell phone company knows where you are. They've used the 7 series for a long time, so we decided better just to skip over the other ones that end up with eight. And it's enough, enough of a revolutionary design that I, we honestly think it deserved a new number. So these are my top eight features. Uh, first thing is the data dictionary. In the past, if you've gone under var lib MySQL, you've seen a whole bunch of little files. Uh, that's your metadata. Uh, trouble with that is those little files chew up inodes, uh, disk space, and they tend to attract the attention of junior admins who tend to do what I call RM accidents. The side effect of having all this stuff now kept within the database itself is that you can now have millions of tables in a schema. Uh, the bad news is you can now have millions of tables in a schema. It hasn't been anyone yet, but I know it's going to happen one of these days. Also with all this, we give you better SQL. Uh, we're trying to match the standards as much as we can, as quickly as we can. And I'll show you some of these things we've added real quickly. Uh, first one is windowing functions. In the past with SQL, uh, you could do analytics on a row or an entire column or you can kind of group, crudely use group by to get stuff together. Well, windowing functions were designed to allow you to group like rows together. Uh, the keyword to look for is over. And in this example here, we're going to order by date and the range is going to be to the interval of one week preceding and the current row. So if you want to do a running total of sales, uh, your boss comes in on a Tuesday after a three day weekend and said, hey, how did the sales go over the holiday weekend? You can now give them that information very easily and very quickly. Also, we added the lateral keyword for lateral derived tables. Uh, if, you wrote sub, if you've written subqueries before, you know they're kind of cantankerous. And my trouble is I was always trying to reference something in the outer query from the inner query. Well, with the lateral keyword, the optimizer now knows how to do that, and you can do that very easily. Also, we added common table expressions, which I hope will eventually replace uh, subqueries. I think they're easier to write, easier to maintain, and easier to read. Uh, there are also uh, uh, great functions that you can do things like they could be joined and referenced multiple times within the same query. Uh, here's an example with the creatively named CTE1 and CTE2. Uh, the first one is selecting A and B from table one. The second one we're selecting C and D from table two. We go out and we're selecting B from the first CTE. We're joining that to CTE2 and you see the, uh, the where clause there. Very, very handy, very easy to use. Optimizer and parser, big changes here. These are the brain and nervous system of the, the database. Uh, in the past, if you asked for a descending index, we lied, I apologize. Uh, we basically used the ascending index backwards uh, with performance hits uh, that consequentially were doing that. 
Uh, no longer we actually have true descending indexes. Uh, optimizer trace gives you more information on the really expensive things like file sorts that uh, can chew up time. Optimizer now supports hints, so if you know the join table A before table B because you've run explain on it and know exactly that's the best way to do it, the optimizer sees that and doesn't try to re-optimize doing the two comparisons, B to A or A to B, and it knows that you know what you're talking about and things will go a little bit faster. That's all kept in a comment in your query. Also, we have two new locking options that I think will excite you. Imagine you're going out to buy a, a ticket for your favorite uh, performer and you want tickets in rows two and three. Uh, the first example you see off on the right, it skips over any locked records, so you're not waiting for someone to unlock the record. So if you have a bunch of people contending for those seats, uh, you're not stuck behind the first person who gets there and locks up all the records. Uh, you get the ones that are not locked. Uh, the second one has no wait, so if you have someone who's locking, if locking up all the records, your program automatically gets returned to, and you can go out there and say, well, let's try rows five and six. CATS, the Contention Aware Transaction Scheduler. Uh, this is a, a heuristic from an academic paper from the University of Michigan, I believe. And the basic idea boiled down is that if you have hot rows or columns in tables, it automatically switches on and knows how to take care of those greedy uh, queries. Uh, switches on automatically, and if you have a lot of contentious uh, uh, queries sitting in the same rows and columns, this will speed things up. UTF-8 MB4. Uh, in the past, our UTF-8 was actually UTF MB3. Uh, it's only three bytes, didn't have all the stuff you really wanted uh, for like the Chinese, Japanese, Korean language, and um, we've now added that. This could be the only problem where you might have an upgrade problem, so if you have things that are using uh, four bytes instead of three, uh, you might be running into some size constraints. constraints. Uh, if you use the upgrade checker with a MySQL utility, so I'll point it out to you. Uh, by the way, uh, we have accent and character sensitive and insensitive coalitions out there for those of you who need them. And this is all because we have people who need those certain graphics out in their data. Invisible indexes are another great idea. Uh, in the past, if you're using explain to find out how a query was going to be run by the, the optimizer, you might have a query that you don't think is good, but you're not sure. So what you do is you run explain, so I'm not sure about that query. Blow away that, that index, rerun explain, and find out, A, you did need that index. It really was the, the best option. And about the time you realize that, the phone's ringing off the hook because everyone else is screaming because they were depending on that index too. Well, with invisible indexes, you make that index invisible to the optimizer. Uh, if it does help, make, um, make it uh, visible. If it doesn't help, make it invisible. Uh, by the way, if you have an uh, index you find it hasn't been used for a while, you're using MySQL work bench to, uh, to look at queries that haven't been run for a long time. Uh, make them invisible, don't blow them away right away. Um, you might find out that's the query that's needed to, that's the, the index that's needed to use the uh, end of uh, quarter or end of year billing statements or something like that. So never blow away an index unless you absolutely have to. Number six, better JSON support. JSON became a standard uh, data type for us in MySQL 5.7. You have a gig payload in there. Uh, anything as long as it's valid JSON is fair game. Uh, use it for JSON formatted data, obviously. Uh, if you have data that's highly immutable, uh, say like you have input from an Internet of Things device and suddenly start spitting out longitude, latitude, and atmospheric pressure, don't have to go out and restructure the table. You just put it in that, that JSON column and away you can go. And yes, you can have more than one JSON column in a table. Also, it's great for reducing many-to-many -many joins. So if you're doing the uh, getting a piece of information, diving to an index that leads to another table, which dives to another index table, index table, uh, those many-to-many -many joins get real expensive, and it's easier to just put that in a JSON document and uh, avoid all that overhead. Uh, also, we have many JSON functions that we use to turn your relational SQL data into JSON if need by B. Uh, this JSON data type is the basis for our new XDEV API, which is the heart of our document store, which is all no SQL. It's a new CRUD-based API, uh, easy to set up. You literally connect to the server, uh, pick out a schema you want to put your your collection of documents, open up a collection and start dropping in documents. No need to normalize the data, no need to set up relational tables, no need to set up indexes, although those are all available later. Uh, it's no SQL syntax, uh, so it's very easy. And by the way, this is not an ORM, it's a new protocol all built on Google Protobufs. And by the way, an interesting side effect uh, here is something we added fairly recently. Uh, if you've ever played with JSON and realized that it doesn't have things uh, like range checking, data type checking, or the ability to have required fields, 
Uh, we're following the uh, guidelines that the jasonschema.org folks do, where you can actually set it up with a constraint check. So you can actually make sure that the data has what you want in the format you want it, because it's easier to find the bad data before it gets into your database and go back later and try to uh, fix it or pull it out. One of the more interesting functions that I love is JSON table. This takes your unstructured JSON data and temporarily makes it structured. Uh, we do have other ways to make uh, unstructured data permanently structured by uh, materialize a column using a generated column. Uh, this is an interesting function. I won't go too much into detail, but if you read the second blue line from right to left, we're going to take anything in that document, any key with the name name, and we're going to cast it as a car 50 and call it creatively name. Uh, great thing about this is it handles uh, nested paths, nested columns, uh, has all of your functions. And once again, once you have this unstructured data structured, you can run it through all the SQL functions you want, like winnowing functions or where x equals something. Uh, very, very handy. Now, here's an example of the API in PHP. Uh, between 50 and 80% of the internet runs on PHP. Thank you, WordPress. Uh, you'll notice uh, this is a fairly simple, straightforward program. Uh, one thing to note is the new port for the new XDEV API is 33060 instead of a traditional 3306. Our first blue line says, OK, we're going to connect with the information above with the password and username. Uh, once we're connected, we figure out the schema that we want to use. In this case, it's a schema called World X. And within World X, we have a collection of documents called Country Info. And once we get that collection of JSON documents open, we're going to go out there and we're going to find, this is the last blue line, find where the underscore ID field is equals to USA, the fields we actually want to pull out, and boom, we're there. Now, this is all done without any structured query language. And something that's really interesting about this API, if you have a junior developer and tell them, hey, we need this sorted, it's very easy for them to look at the documentation and figure out how to add in the thing to do an order by. Uh, really fast, really easy. Uh, support most of the famous programming languages that you all know and love. Histograms. Uh, indexes are great for going right to the record or records that you want. Uh, the only trouble is that there's a lot of overhead and maintenance for those. So every time you insert, delete, or update a uh, something that hits the index, uh, there's overhead that goes for that. What you do with histograms is you uh, basically set up buckets and divvy your data up into buckets. This is for data that's not churning and burning. It's for fairly static data. Uh, what we're doing is we're dividing the data up into two different types, the singleton or the equihite. Uh, singletons, like in the old school days, where they have everyone whose last name begins with A over in the first row, everyone whose name begins with B in the second row, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the equi height is where they just have uh, everyone getting four rows, and you know uh, alphabetical order by the four rows. So you know that someone whose last name begins with a, a Q or a Z is going to be in the last row. The optimizer now knows a little bit better where to go grab this information. Uh, by the way, there's a default uh, well, you can have up to 10, 24 buckets, but please start with something smaller and see how the space is used. This is highly dependent on the cardinality of uh, how you're uh, divvying up the data. Explain, analyze. Earlier I mentioned explain. Explain itself works on historical data, so it kind of gives you the guesstimate of how the query is going to be uh, set up to run. Explain, analyze actually takes your query and runs it and gives you real time uh, what's going on. So you actually know how things are going to go, the real cost, the real elapsed time. By the way, for any difference between explain and explain and analyze, it's time to do some maintenance on your table and explain and analyze. Well, that's my top eight, and boy, am I leaving out a whole lot. Um, some of the stuff I'm leaving out is InnoDB cluster, which is our uh, active, active, uh, fault tolerant, highly available cluster. Uh, replica groups, which is our traditional MySQL replication with a little twist in it, and I'll mention that twist in a second. MySQL router, which is lightweight level four router, uh, put that on your application server. Your application talks through the router to the cluster. Your application shouldn't know how many machines are out there in the cluster. Uh, it should just uh, be t chatting back and forth about data. Now, the interesting thing is the clone plugin. The clone plugin, uh, when a new machine comes up, looks for a donor machine, and it does a NODB file space or table space copy very quickly between the two machines. Uh, no more having to do backups, copy the backup over, restore the backup and all that. Uh, it goes really, really quickly. Also, we have the new MySQL shell. Uh, the old shells uses a protocol that's getting kind of old. We added a lot of neat features, uh, including extensible help and command completion. So if you can't remember uh, the, the syntax, uh, type in a couple character tab and it'll show you the options. By the way, the new shell speaks Python and JavaScript, so if you have libraries that you like to use with those, 
uh, to manipulate your data. You can load those in there. And of course, it speaks to SQL. Uh, great admin tool. And by the way, it has a parallel bulk loader. So you have JSON, comma separated, or tab separated uh, files you need to load in in parallel. Uh, it's great there. Also in the server, we've added hash joins. So if you're doing equi joins, you'll find things run a lot faster. Uh, dual passwords for in cases where you uh, need to expire an old password, but you don't want to update all 800 of your applications at once. You can kind of move them over because the MySQL account suddenly has two passwords. And after you've moved everyone over, you can expire the old password. Uh, doing a whole lot with compression uh, with the ZSTD, uh, using this for uh, replication heavily. By the way, the compressed files on the replicas do not have to be decompressed to be used. And I am skipping over a whole lot. Uh, by the way, if you uh, are interested in more in MySQL, uh, go to mysqlcommunity.slack.com or forums.mysql.com. Our engineers hang out there and they'll answer questions. And it's also interesting to see what other folks are doing. Also, go to mysql.com for documentation. And on Twitter, we're at MySQL. And with that, I want to thank you. If you need to get a hold of me, here's my contact information, david.stokes at oracle.com, at Stoker. Uh, my blog is elephantdolphin.blogger.com. And by the way, I wrote a book on MySQL and JSON. Amazon has this on sale frequently. 